Yes, ma'am. Just had to make sure YouTube is up. We we're good to go. Ready? Okay. And let's see. We have a full panel here. All right. Well, good morning. Good morning. Let us come to order and go on the record. I am Commissioner Tanola D. Brown Bland with the North Carolina Utilities Commission, presiding commissioner for this hearing. With me this morning via remote connection are Commissioner Lyons Gray and Commissioner Floyd B. McKissick, Jr. I now call for hearing docket number T4799 sub zero in the matter of Elephant Movers LLC, 18N 2nd Street, Franklinton, North Carolina, 27525, application for certificate of exemption. On March 24, 2020, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 62-261-8 and Commission Rule R2-8.1, Elephant Movers, LLC, hereafter the applicant, filed an application with the Commission for Certificate of Exemption, hereafter certificate, to transport household goods by motor vehicle within North Carolina for compensation. On August 7, 2020, the Commission issued an order scheduling application for hearing. On October 2, 2020, the Commission issued an order that in part set the remote hearing to be held by WebEx for today, Wednesday, October the 28, 2020, at 10 a.m. for the purpose of receiving applicant testimony regarding the certificate, uh, the application for certificate. On October 22nd, 2020, the Public Staff, the North Carolina Utilities Commission, filed a letter indicating it will not participate in this hearing. Pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 62-71, this is a public hearing during which all matters of relevance may be discussed, except the confidential matters, such as those pertaining to the part of the application dealing with criminal records checks, will be discussed in confidential, in a confidential or closed hearing. Uh, as criminal record checks for the application are treated as confidential as required by law. Pursuant to the State Ethics Act, I remind the members of the Commission of our duty to avoid conflicts of interest, and I inquire at this time as to whether any Commissioner has any known conflict of interest with respect to this docket. I could reflect that no conflicts have been identified. I'll now call upon counsel to announce his appearance for the record. Thank you, Commissioner. My name is Nathaniel Honecker. I'm here on behalf of the applicant and I'm here with Ahmed Green and Inez Green. We have, uh, we're pleased to announce a name change from uh, Ms. Green, previously Ms. Derichi. Uh, this couple was just married a couple of weeks ago and so they're here before you not only as the sole members and managers of the LLC, but also as husband and wife. And that's why they can be so close when I have to distance myself over here on the other side of the table. But we're all grateful to be here and thank you very much. Thank you for that, Mr. Honecker. And uh, again, congratulations to the Greens. I see Mr. Green is all smiles. And I'm sure Mrs. Green is too, but I can't see you behind the mask. So good to have you here. And thanks for um, responding to our order. Um, before we get started, I just wanted to make a few points on the record uh, in light of the hearing being um, that it's being conducted remotely. Um, just a second. Just misplaced one thing. Hold on. All right. Now, this hearing has been made accessible to the public by way of an access link provided on the Commission's website. In its October 2nd, 2020 order, the Commission asked, asked all parties to file a statement 
consenting to holding the expert witness hearing by remote means or a statement objecting to the same. I'm going to ask you now, Mr. Honecker, um, do you and your clients consent to this hearing being held remotely? Yes, ma'am, we do. All right. In that same order, the parties were directed to file with the commission any potential exhibits that might be used at the hearing. And Mr. Honecker, I believe uh, on October 24th, you filed several potential exhibits, I believe going up through exhibit number eight. Um, and that PDF document has been circulated to the commission panel members. Is that correct for, for in terms of what you submitted? Yes, ma'am, we do have eight exhibits. Thank you. All right. And also, as I understand it, the, uh, yesterday there was a technology check that verified that the parties and the participants are, are able to join in and use both the WebEx and the Microsoft Teams to participate in this hearing. Because a portion of this hearing will concern confidential matters, when we get to those, we will leave the WebEx video conference and join the Teams meeting. And when uh, discussion of the confidential matters is complete, we will leave the Teams meeting and come back to the WebEx video conference. Uh, while the hearing is being conducted remotely using video conference technology, it is the Commission's expectation that the hearing will be conducted as if it were uh, being held in the hearing room. And this means that we must uh, maintain order and um, not, not um, not speak over each other and be sure that the court reporter is able to to uh, record everything that we have to say. Excuse me just a moment. I keep getting my things out of, here we go. And to that end, when you are not speaking, uh, please keep your microphone on mute to avoid feedback. And also, uh, when you first use a potential exhibit, we're asking that you state the exhibit number and then give a short description of the document by title or otherwise to enable the participants and the commissioners to find the document. Um, then ask to have the document marked for identification in the record before asking any further questions about it. Now, the application was set for hearing because the commission has questions regarding the application before we determine whether issuance of a certificate of exemption is in the public interest and whether the applicant is fit to be certificated. When we need to discuss the part of the application dealing with the criminal records check, the hearing will be closed to those not part of the commission uh, uh, or closed to those who are not part of the commission um, and the applicant and anyone else the applicant wishes to be present during the team's meeting may attend for that confidential portion. So if, so if there's anyone else or any other witnesses you need to call, they may participate in the confidential portion. Um, are there any preliminary questions or matters that the commission needs to take up before we start? Hearing none from Mr. Honecker, um, um, I believe you indicated you would like to do an opening or at least get us started, so you may do that at this time. Yes, ma'am. I'll, I'll be very brief in my opening statement. I, I'd just like to start by saying it's a privilege to be here before you. This is my first time as an attorney appearing before the Utilities Commission, and it is also my client's first time, so we're very humbled to be here. We thank you for the opportunity, and we'll certainly defer to you on procedural matters. I, I ask for your patience if, since I'm not familiar with the process from direct experience. I have studied similar hearings that the Commission staff provided with me, but we're going to do the best we can and defer to your expertise and all things that are procedural. Um, it's, it's really my privilege to represent these two in this hearing. Mr. and Ms. Green have an amazing story, their background, the challenges that they've faced and the challenges that they've overcome, the transition that Mr. Green made in the middle of his life and what he's been able to do after that transition, the business they've started, the success they've experienced and their vision for the future is truly admirable. It, it is really my privilege to, for this to be my first experience with the Utilities Commission to represent them. I think that their story is going to come out very easily in your line of questioning, and so I don't anticipate my needing to be as involved as some other attorneys in some other proceedings. I, I, I've instructed them to be honest, forthright, 
and uh, to just answer all of your questions as directly as possible. And, and we look forward to the opportunity to, to uh, clarify anything you need to speak about. Thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Honecker. Um, and also, the commission would ask you to um, have some patience with us as we continue to get used to using these remote means for conducting our, our hearings. All right, um, well then, if you would um, establish Mr. Green as if on the witness stand, um, I'm, I'm going to, you, you call him and I'm going to administer um, the affirmation. And um, if you would just establish for us um, who he is, his address, those basics for me. Yes, ma'am. This is uh, Ahmed Green. Uh, the address is uh, 18. Well, how, how, just, just let me get him on the stand, and um, and then you can ask him those questions. Okay. So, is, is Mr. Green your first witness? Did you wish to call? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mr. Green. Do you solemnly affirm that the testimony you would give should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, Commissioner. All right, now, Mr. Hanneker, if you would ask him those questions, get him to establish um, name Green, and identification. Uh, can I just ask you for your full name? Yeah, Lamont Green. Can I ask you for your date of birth, please? Uh, August 7th, 1981. And your home address, please? 1807 Street, Franklin, North Carolina. All right, Mr. Green, um, in this uh, matter before us now, did you file, did you on behalf of the um, applicant Elephants Movers LLC file an application for a certificate of exemption? Yes, Commissioner. And are you familiar with it? Somewhat, Commissioner. Do you have that in front of you? Uh, yes. All right. Would you just take a moment and and look through it and verify that that is the uh, application as you filed it? The application was filed by attorneys at Mosley and Matheson, um, who then referred me this case when they had a scheduling conflict. And so Mr. Green is familiar with it, but they were the ones who filed the actual paperwork. All right. That you recognize that, Mr. Green? Yes, ma'am. All right. The commission, for the record, will identify the application as Commission Green Exhibit 1. All right. Having looked through it, is there anything that uh, you see that might, that has changed, that needs to be changed, other than Mr. DeRuch's name? Uh, no. Take your time. Be sure if anything needs updating or needs to be corrected. Everything is the same. Hey, and has Ms. Derucci changed her name? Uh, I think when it's like a process, like we just got married on the 10th, and so then we had to go back down and go through the whole process of the name change. All right. And is she going to adopt the name Green? Yes. Okay. Um. Mr. Green, just so we want to establish your background, would you tell us um, um, how long you've lived in North Carolina and whether you've lived anywhere else? Um, yeah, I lived in New Jersey. I was born in New Jersey, and I lived there up until uh, 2005, and then recently in 2017. So in 2017, I was technically homeless and lived in a shelter on South Wilmington Street. And from 2017 to now, I've been living in North Carolina as a resident. All right. And um, so uh, until you came to North Carolina in 2005, you, you remained in New Jersey. Is that correct? Yes, New Jersey and New York. New Jersey and New York. All right. And how long did you live in New York? Uh, for just about a year. I was going to college in New York. All right. And what time frame was that, if you recall? Um, 2004 to 2005. All right, thank you. Now, um, would you please discuss, and I'll give you an uh, opportunity to put it in your words, um, your your work history 
discover your life. And I'd ask you just to emphasize those parts that um, that are relevant to the moving business or to the industry. Um, in 2017, um, I was introduced to a moving company. I was working for a, a construction company called Tradesman International. And one of my cousins introduced me to a moving company called Branch Out Moving and Delivery and owned by uh, Mr. Walter. And so that was like my introduction to moving in 2017. Um, it was something that was physical. I like to, like to work out and do something that changes scenery. Every day is different scenery. So it wasn't like monotonous and I got kind of, I, I liked it a lot. Um, got my skills up and doing some of the stuff and it was a piece of money coming in. So um, it was something I was like really attracted to. I can learn the technical part very easy. And with my background in project management and my interest in project management, I seen it was easy like to become a cool lead and organize um, crews. All right. And tell me about your project management background and experience. Yes, sir, I want to briefly say, uh, Ms. Derevici has some children at home and some other matters. She needs to take a phone call very briefly, but uh, or Ms. Green, excuse me, but we're going to just let her step out while we proceed with this questioning with your permission. Go right ahead. Thank you. All right, we, I was asking you about your project management background and skills. Um, <clears throat> So a lot of a lot of my education came from um, self studies. I went to school for business administration, but a lot of my interest came from just like picking up the book, start from the beginning, business um, project management for dummies and stuff like that, and seeing just like you know the tech, the, the organizational skills and you know just the, the everything about project management was just interesting to me. Just to be able to operate a team and be technical about it. And so I studied that for about, self-studied that for about two or three years. So your first uh, work in the moving industry started in 2017? Yes, ma'am. All right. Before that, um, just over your your um, life's history, did you have other work or employment? Uh, very, very, very little. Okay. So once you started working in the industry, what kind of jobs did you hold? What kind of duties did you uh, perform? Um, I started out as just like a, a, a mover and it was just, uh, you know, residential, a little bit of commercial. And then within like six months, I was responsible for going on uh, crews out of state, went to different states uh, all over the country for Mr. Walt and just, you know, organizing the crews. I was crew leader, so I was responsible for going in there, uh, doing scope time, cost, quality assessments, and, um, you know, making sure everybody knew their role, stuff like that, processing payments. So it's crew leader that you had, were you responsible for finding your workers for the crews or did the company do that for you? Yeah, the company, they already had crews. It was like they were already crews and crew leaders just get a little bit more money and consider, you know, just like the, the point of contact between the customer and the crew. All right. So you filed your application for a certificate in March of this year. Uh, what prompted you to file it when you, at the time that you did? Um, I think it was just uh, opportunity. I was doing construction and, you know, doing moving on the weekends and stuff like that. And for 11 hours a day doing construction, I just had to look up at the crane. And I was kind of <laughs> just frustrated with just looking up at the crane. And I was like, man, you know, my potential was just so much more. Like I always had a vision to like, you know, own my own business is like what I studied. And um, my wife, she, you know, had a little bit of money saved up. I had a little bit of money saved up and I borrowed something from my parent, my mother. And I just said, we're just going to go all in. So how, how did you come to learn that you uh, either needed or wanted to file an application with the commission? Um, Because I worked with, uh, like I said, Mr. Walsh and Branch Out Moving and also a moving company called Safe and Sound. And, and I worked like hand in hand with the bosses. So I kind of picked their brains a little bit. All right. 
And so you decided you'd rather go out on your own than to um than to continue to work with them. Yes, ma'am. Uh, not not to, not to come across as arrogant, but I kind of I kind of felt like I can do better than what they do, and I can bring a little bit. I can I could kind of get yeah, old, <laughs> you know, and you know how they do things is kind of different. They don't take care of their movers. I felt underappreciated working for them guys, getting fifteen dollars an hour, and it's hard work. So I felt like I mean I can do a little bit better, bring a breath a uh, uh, breath of fresh air to the industry and then take care of the guys a little better. So a lot of the guys that work for those moving companies that were coming over to me when I tried to do my thing. All right. Um, now, in response to filing the application, do you recall receiving a letter or an email from Mr. Jeffers with the commission that um, asked about your insurance documents? Yes, ma'am. I spoke to Mr. Jeffries a few times. All right. Did you recall receiving that letter, um, a letter dated May 4th or an email May 4th? Yes. Um, and and that the letter, do you recall the letter informed you not to operate as a mover until you were certificated by the commission? Uh, I can't recall. Uh, my wife said it was a request, but when I spoke to Mr. Jeffries, he verbally told me that um, it was kind of like restricted to commercial and not to use our truck to operate. Um, it was like a temporary thing. And then later on in the call, he told me, I then we received the letter. It was later though, it was like a recent letter, probably a couple months ago. I believe August 7th was the first official communication from the commission which requested that uh, Mr. and Ms. Green abstain from household moving. All right, so Ms. Uh, Mr. Green, do you do other moves in addition to household goods moving? Um, commercial moves, yes ma'am, commercial and uh, residential. Tell me a little bit about your commercial business. Uh, commercial moves? Uh, commercial moves is, is a lot simpler than residential. A lot of times we go in, there's uh, cubicles that we take down, dust that we take apart, and it's the, almost the same process. It's a little bit simpler unless they have like um, computers and stuff like that that we uh, you know, use blankets and boxes and stuff to uh, safeguard on the truck. But other than, you know, just being in a commercial space, we kind of do it the same way as far as we protect it and stack the truck a certain way. With your commercial business, do you have repeat business? Do you have repeat customers? The commercial business is not only like residential. So over, you know, the, the months we probably did three or four commercial jobs. All right. Do you do um, interstate moves going from state to state? Uh. I have done. I have done one. Yes. All right. Um. Have you um had occasion already to take what we call the NT training, the maximum rate tariff class? Uh, I haven't had the opportunity to do that. All right. It's something that we require, but I don't know how uh, COVID has affected. So I'm sure um, should you be certificated, you'll be contacted and told um, how to do that. Um, were you aware? Are you aware of it otherwise? Yes, ma'am. I, I informed Mr. Green of, the, of, of that class, and I, I instructed him to get in contact with you guys if he has the privilege of being certificated. That would be the next step. So I have informed him of that. All right. And um, if your uh, if the application for elephant movers is approved, um, you are prepared to uh, maintain the proper insurance coverages and to take the MRT training, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, with regard to elephant movers, um, I think you said you start. When did you start that business? And tell me, where the name elephant came from. Okay. Uh, I think we came up with the concept in February. We started doing our, our research in February, so then March we put in the application. So it was more so like doing the research to figure out what was the process with insurance and trucking. So it was like uh, 
my wife is responsible for doing all that. And, you know, I was, you know, I'm not really good with computers. And so she did all the research stuff and figured out the process. We did a lot of couple things backwards. We had to double back. And, um, but Elephant Movers just came from uh, my background. It's, uh, just where I come from, I'm from North New Jersey. And the community is like broken up. It's, it's real hard. And so I never really seen a community thing. And it wasn't until I started educating myself and reading a lot that, I mean, I realized that it takes a community. I mean, they, you know, a lot of people do with uh, Zodiac and stuff like that. And I just always fascinated by the elephant and what it universally symbolized, which is family orientation, community orientation, intelligence. And I mean, so it started with not just elephant movers, but as a concept of getting my community back together, so it was elephant movement. And then I didn't know I was going to do movement until later on. I was doing construction. I was like, well, I need to figure out something. And then elephant movers it just it just clicked. All right. And um, this was February of 2020 when you when you um, started putting the business together. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So it was a new business. When you filed your application with us, it was a new business? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you do any other moving business um, under any other name? No, ma'am. All right. Do you do any any other non-moving? Um, it's the movies day in and day out. Full-time movies. So you're not employed by anyone else? No, ma'am. All right. Do you have, um, have you had time, because it's a relatively new building, but do you have a plan for the business, like how you plan to grow it? Do you wish to grow it? Yes, ma'am. Talk to me about your plans for the business. For, for the business. Um, so I plan on uh, if being certificate, certificated, I plan on just, you know, to kind of get outside the scope of moving and kind of add like a cleaning service onto the moving company. So it's like a pack you up, clean you out type of thing. Uh, we want to definitely offer those services right there. But uh, I think the the industry from, from just starting a company and I see that there's a trucking aspect to also moving. And so now my vision is to have like elephant represent anything that's dealing with trucking and hard work. So in the future, I want to have the elephant logo on all trucks, dump trucks, 18 wheelers, and we plan on just expanding anything dealing with trucks and hard work. All right. And since you mentioned your trucks, so right now, according to the application, you have just one truck. Is it is that the only vehicle you use in the business? Yes, ma'am. And that's a 2005 International? Yes, ma'am. All right. Do you have a uh, backup plan around that truck if it were to break down on you say in the middle of a job and you already had it loaded um do you have a backup plan man the truck can broke down quite a few times <laughs> it, 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 i got a good mechanic so when um so how do you deal with it when it's broken down do you have access to uh backup or yes, rent, rent rent a vehicle or something yes ma'am we've been using like u-haul a lot and budget Anytime the truck backs down or we have a job that takes multiple trucks, then we'll rent from you on a budget. All right. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes, oh, excuse me. Go ahead. I was going to say sometimes we have like two and three jobs operating at the same time. And so we have like multiple trucks out at once. Right. So you were anticipating what I was about to ask if it happened frequently that you needed other vehicles. Yes, ma'am. All right. So how many people work for um, Elephant Movers? Right now we have two contractors that's like work all the time. And then I always can like in advance call people from the other moving companies. So they're happy to come over and work with me. So, um, so wait, wait, repeat that for me again. How many? We have two uh, contractors that work regularly. And if we have a job that takes four movers, five movers, or we have multiple jobs in a day, and if we need, so I can always call like uh, other people, other movers that might be available if I give them a vast notice. All right. And are you, you find your movers from past 
um, contacts you've had or you have another way? How do, how do you find movers uh, to help you, employees to help you? So a lot of times I take from uh, Branch Out Moving and Safe and Sound Moving, guys, um, you know, uh, it's like, it's like, we all know each other, like the good guys, you know, other guys that do moving, that, you know, moving companies. And then I reach out to somebody who might know somebody that's available. If they're not in my contacts, if I need other people, then I reach out to other movers who might know movers. All right. Now, and what is your role in the day-to-day -day operations of the business? What do you do? Uh, so I take phone calls a lot of times. A lot of times I'm on a truck as crew leader. Just, you know, it, it's like I'm, I feel so invested in the company that I be on a job and I'm making sure that, I mean, nothing is broken. I'm dealing with the customer. I'm trying to give a brand. I mean, I think I'm like the person that should initiate with the customer and just give them that elephant brand. And uh, do you take care of the administrative matters? Who does uh, that for you? My wife, she's, she's mostly doing that type of stuff. All right, because she's good with the computers and you're not. Yes, calendars, all that type of stuff right there. It couldn't be possible without her. Um, who prices the jobs and or provides the quotes? Um, so we have like a base rate for two movers and our base rate is 105 an hour and then that's the labor cost. And then we have a travel fee which covers gas, mileage, maintenance on the truck, which is typically like $69. And then we have a, a, a three movers rate, which is 135 an hour with the same $69 fucking travel. That's mainly consistent unless it's a 50 mile radius. But then we have a four movers rate, which is 160 hour. So when you, um, when you, when a customer calls um, and you take that call, do you quote them then or do you have to go out and see what they have and then you give them a quote? Most of the time is based off I mean, how many rooms they say they have. So like two bedrooms, if it's a two bedroom house or on the second floor, then we do two movers. If it's a two bedroom on the third floor, anything done on the third floor, we'll probably provide three movers. If it's like a four bedroom house and it's like expected to be a big job, then I'll go out to the residence and do uh, an estimate. I'll walk around, look, give them a scope, time and cost estimate. Now, as the principal, are you the one that provides the quote and tells them what the job is going to cost, or do, do you allow others to do it as well? How's that work? I provide, I provide uh, the cost. I determine what the cost is. All right. And do you have experience um, with the billing, or is that something that's being handled by uh, Mrs. Green? Uh, I have experience with the billing. My experience comes from, you know, working for other moving companies and we were going with the bill of lighting, have to fill out the paperwork and stuff like that. And so um, um, we use the Square app to process our calls. We have a process where if uh, someone reaches us on like any one of our platforms, Yelp, Thumbtack, Facebook, then we have them email our business email as like a contract sort of thing with, with everything we agreed to, price, date, time, cost, and then we'll send a confirmation email agreeing to that right there, and, and that operates as our like contract. And do you use contract laborers or, um, or in other words, when you're dealing with your employees, how do they get paid? Do they get paid by the hour or by the job? Yes, ma'am. Uh, so we have we pay by the hour, and our crew leaders, they receive $20 an hour. Labor was generally like $18 an hour. Um, uh, we, issue, we issue checks on a weekly basis. All right, that was, that was one of my other questions. And um, since you've been in the business, has, do, has the business received complaints about its work or anything dealing with its employees? Uh, we have a few negative reviews. We have about four or five negative reviews. Um, I think. With your permission, Commissioner, I'd like to refer you to the first few exhibits. Those all deal with reviews, including complaints. Uh, all right, and if Mr. Green wants to talk about them now, he 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 can do that. 
in response to my question. But I'm, so I'm just asking, do you have some and then tell me how you handle them? Yes, ma'am. Um, so we do have a few negative reviews. Uh, I like to handle the reviews like right there on the spot. If, it, if a customer is, if it's something that we damage and it can be replaced like from the, the cost of the, the total cost of the um, job, then I would prefer to do that. Uh, we haven't really had any reviews that went outside that scope right there. But if it was something that was bigger than that and I couldn't handle it, then I would probably refer to like the insurance. If we can go through the insurance to handle it. But so far we had like a, a broken dresser, uh, a damaged floor, and we repaired the cost of those items immediately. Uh, customer left a review. And then I immediately respond to that review publicly and let them know that I mean, I'm willing to handle whatever the cost is. And I appreciate the review and the criticism and we only can get better with those type of reviews. All right. Um, do you consider that you had that you have many? You, I seem, you seem to say maybe three, four so yeah. far. Out of, out of about 80 reviews, we have about four or five negative reviews. And 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 not just written reviews, but in terms of just getting customer feedback, have have you had complaints? No, ma'am. No. Did you have uh, good reports? Yes, ma'am. Majority good. We have repeat. We have repeat customers, and there's a lot of steam, a lot of support from the customer. All right, and um, couple of questions. So. When I was asking you about your duties, do you do you have driving duties? Do you drive the truck? Uh, I have, but uh, not anymore because you know I got into trouble with driving. So my wife is like definitely no. So one of our contractors is our main driver. Travis Banks, he's our main driver. He has license. I, my license is revoked or is on hold because I have to wait for everyone with the DMV. Okay, and. With regard to your truck, do you have plans or 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 do you are you anticipating purchasing a new truck? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm thinking that if given an opportunity this year that for the eight, seven, eight months that we've been in operating, it's been very, very and uh the truck is right now we want to get the whole truck wrapped it's going to be a rolling billboard the elephant. we want the elephant to be across the whole side <laughs> you know i got i got like i got some plans man and then we do want to get a smaller truck to handle like um you know like typical two bedrooms we have a 26 for it now so we get like a 20 foot and we can do like a 20 foot gas truck we can do like the normal two bedrooms which is mainly for the winter time things go down in, in the winter but if given the opportunity to operate next year, we definitely have plans for another truck. All right now, in preparing for a job or, or when someone is calling about a new job, do you ever have to go out and look at it first? If it's, if it's, if it's like a big move, I think the scope is big. So sometimes customers really don't, they call and say, we have a four bedroom house. And I'm like, is there a bonus room in the garage? And they're like, yes. Is there appliances, washer, dryer, pianos, any such things? And they're saying yes. And I'm like, well, this may be a two-day process where we have to pack one day. I may possibly use multiple trucks and then unload the next day. And so just to, you know, verify and give them a, a, a fair rate, I mean, because I'm like, I can go into a house and mentally look and like, well, this one, this one, one, and then size up how much space it takes up on the truck and how much time. Oh my God! So I will go out and look at a job to determine if we need to, you know, adjust uh, our procedure. Now, Mr. Green, have you had any classes on, um, say, say, um, packing, how how to pack various items, um, how to load a truck? Uh, I, I learned hands on, uh, Mr. Walt, when I first started work, working with Branch Out Moving. And in the moving industry, we call it like an all-star team. At one time, we had like an all-star team. These guys, was, <laughs> these guys were so good. And it was like, you know, just being around, I learned just by seeing things. I mean, hands-on experience. I could see something, learn, and then ask questions. And then they were teaching me certain things. So I learned how to pack a truck just by experience. All right. And um in all of your experience, whether with Elephant or with one of the other movies that you used to work with, 
have you had have you had to deal with difficult customers um you know that just have serious complaints all the time or who may become irate on you um have you had that experience and had to deal with that and if so could you tell me a little bit about it yes ma'am not 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 irate i never dealt with an irate customer but i've dealt with uncomfortable situations and customers that you no matter how hard you work seem to can't please and in those situations right there i just focus on the work and not really try to interact with the customer as much as get the job done best as we can and get out of there you know, so I think the focus is always a good experience when you go into a house and the customer is smiling and then our demeanor kind of sets them at a comfortable rate because we're coming in, we're always upbeat and we're smiling and we do try to engage with the customer and talk to them. And some customers, you know, just, just can't do that way and they just more focused and, you know, just get the job done, get out of here. And we're like, oh, okay, no problem. I mean... <laughs> Do you, do, uh, do you consider yourself skilled at being able to sort of uh, de-escalate and tone down the situation? I'm the best. They 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 ever get to the best? They ever get the best of you and get you to um, respond at their level? I'm the best. I'm the best at being calm. I think that you know, with my experience is being, it, I don't really feel like pressure under those situations because I've been in real pressure. So because someone is like finicky or not pleased or something like that, then it, it's not something to get me uncomfortable. I just do the job and get out of there. All right. So you don't lose your cool. You're Mr. Cool. That's you bring thing. the cool. Uh, one, one, of, one of our complaints, one of our complaints in, in one of the exhibits, we did a move for a lady and she, you know, she was happy all the way up until we was unloading. And then she just had, it, it was like nothing we can do to please. And I'm like, man, we just went through, I mean, part of my friends, but we just went through hell to complete this move. And you're just like, okay, well, you know what, man, I'm, I'm glad you gave us the opportunity. Next time, if, if giving us the chance, man, to work for you again, we can do better. All right. Um, let me see, just a second. Do you have um do you do you uh get referrals for work? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um anything you can add about that? Is it do you get them reg do you get them regularly? Um uh I insurance uh, I insurance guy and he referred several people to us. Uh go to him for insurance. We executed all those jobs and we kept getting about three jobs for people he recommended to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get a lot of referrals. Do you, um, how do you plan to, for the future, how do you plan to market the business? One marketing, you've already said you're going to have your elephant everywhere you can and on your truck. What are your, any other marketing plans? Um. So we do have like a team that we hired to do like, you know, online marketing and I'm sitting down with them now just, you know, I think um, just getting the full license, just being, getting his license, man, just the MC number on the side is just give us so much more opportunity to do so much more with the industry. Um, I think that the movie industry, like working with uh, Mr. Walt and those guys, you know, with 400 some reviews. I, I watched I watched the reviews a lot. It's you know, with so much reviews that the only thing they do is just answer their phone. And there's really nothing going into branding and making the companies feel like there's family and friends oriented. I mean, so we do want to get on the air, we do want to do commercials, we do want to be active in the community, not just at, in the capacity of movers, but as a moving company that's promoting family and, and you know, community. It's what Elephant is about. All right. Um, Mr. Honecker, it won't be long now that I want to go into the confidential session, but before we do that, I'll give you a chance to kind of redirect and put the story in, in the, in the uh, kind of the order that you'd like to have it in. And if you would like the uh, exhibits that you've um, submitted to be um, used or included at this time, you can go through those and let's get them introduced. Yes, ma'am. Turn it over to you. 
Thank you very much. Uh, you covered a lot of the line of questioning that I had planned to introduce if given the opportunity. I would like to go over the exhibits. Uh, exhibits one through three are simply cover pages of various review platforms. Exhibit one is Thumbtack, in which Elevant Movers has received 60 reviews, a fairly substantial amount for a new business. The average review is a 4.8 out of 5. So as Mr. Green was saying, I think among those 60, I, I read through and skimmed all 60 reviews, and I believe there were three that were either a one or a two, and I believe every other review was a five-star review. Well, let me have you, um, so let's get them um, identified on this record, and let me have you just ask him questions about them to, to uh, kind of authenticate them for the record. And... Um, and then you can go through anything you wish to with him, uh, either to expand upon the questions I ask or, or whatever case you might have. All right. Mr. Green, do you recognize this cover page? Which review platform is this cover page referring to? This is exhibit one for the record. Uh, this is Dumbtack. And how many reviews have you received? Uh, Dumbtack 60. The average so, review? So let me say, so we will identify this um, thumb is it thumbtack? Yes, ma'am. We will identify this uh, one page exhibit as applicant exhibit one. All right, now go ahead. And out of those 60 reviews, what is the average rating out of five stars? 4.8. Thank you. That's no further questions about exhibit one. Referring to exhibit two, Mr. Green, uh, which review platform does this exhibit refer to? It's not Facebook. That's not All right, Facebook. we will mark this. Um, Say that again. I'm sorry. Could you tell me what that refers to one more time? I cannot understand you. Oh, uh, excuse me. That's Facebook platform. And we will um, have this exhibit marked applicant exhibit two. And what is the average review rating that you've received on Facebook out of five? Uh, five. Five out of five. So 100% five star rating based on the reviews of four people on Facebook. And I have no further questions about exhibit two. Moving on to exhibit three, Mr. Green, do you recognize this? Which platform, review platform, is exhibit three referred to? This is, this is Yelp. All right, we will have this identified as applicant exhibit three. And it's also a one page document. And what is the average rating for elephant movers on the Yelp review platform? Uh, um, on Yelp, I'm thinking it's a 4.5. 4.5. 4. And what is the maximum? That's a 4.5 out of 5. For Yelp. And I have no further questions about Exhibit 3. The next two exhibits I'd like to discuss with Mr. Green refer to negative reviews. Exhibit 4, do you recognize this exhibit, Mr. Green? I guess I do. Which review platform hosted this complaint? Uh, all right, let's get this one identified. Is this, this is a two-page document? Yes, ma'am, this is the only two-page exhibit. And we'll mark it as applicant exhibit four, and it um, appears to have a narrative. Yes, ma'am, Mr. Green, could you describe the situation that led up to this complaint? One second, please. Uh, in WT complaint, uh, we had we had three moves that day. Our truck was broken. We have a lift gate on our truck, so the movers instead of having to use the lift gate, we were having to pick pick the furniture up physically and put it on the truck. And so um, we were kind of running a, a little late, and some of the moves were a little bit bigger than estimated. And so by the time we got to uh, Mr. Jerry, man, I think I had like three, 
two or three guys they were kind of amateurs they were just kind of getting started and the guys were kind of tired and so you know i was kind of coaching the guys through giving them instruction you know encouraging them you know and some things happened i'm not sure exactly what happened but uh uh some things happened in the move where you know the, the customer wasn't completely satisfied he thought that it could have went a little better than it did and at the time you know i expressed to him that you know i probably i think we damaged we scratched the floor and i didn't know at the time but then he went online and left a review and he he described the situation where you know the guys were tired but i made was good the guys were tired but i made was was good and they damaged the floor and i immediately reached out when i seen the review and was like yeah I, I agree with the with your description of the move and we apologize for damaging the floor and um we can have some guys come out and completely fix the floor and he agreed to that and this was is this reflected on page two of the exhibit your response do you recognize this as the response that you typed in response to this negative review yes sir is this your typical response to a customer when they give a negative review? Yes, sir. I have no further questions about Exhibit 4. Exhibit 5. Mr. Green, do you recognize this as one of the reviews that your company received? Another review on Thumbtack? Uh, yes, sir. All right, well, this is a one page. Yes, ma'am. And um, it's a one page exhibit um, up in the left hand corner. It has the date 10 26 2020. I think that's just the printout date, but for purposes of identification. Yes, ma'am, that is the printout date. The review is from July 27th of this year, 2020. All right, we'll mark this as applicant exhibit five. What was your response when Ms. Rashonda posted this review and indicated that you had broken a fragile item in her house? Um, I'm not sure what my response was to her review, but I remember being on the move and she had like a, a dresser and the dresser had, it was cute with uh, clothes and stuff in it. And we were lifting the dresser up and it just completely shattered. Any dresser, like an Ikea dresser, it completely shattered. And she, you know, her thing was, oh, my God, don't worry about it. It was a cheap, cheap dress. And I'm like, no, man, we broke the dress. It was functional when we picked it up and it broke. So I would love to replace that at, at its market value. And so she just went online, pulled up the dresser, and we just deducted the price of the dresser from the move rate. And she was happy with that. Just to refresh your recollection, could you read starting with nevertheless? This is in the customer's own words. If you'll just read starting with nevertheless right there. Um, the nevertheless, I may offer to pay me for replacing the item and remove the full cost from my moving fee. He was very forthright and willing to make it right. So I appreciated his maturity and how he took responsibility for it. All right. Thank you very much. Is that your typical response to whenever you damage an item? Yes, sir. Like to move on to exhibit six. Mr. Green, do you recognize this as a letter of recommendation from one of your previous employers? Yes, sir. What All right, so this looks like a, a letter from a Reggie Stornelli. Yes, ma'am. We'll identify it as applicant exhibit six. Mr. Green, what is your relationship with Mr. Stornelli? Um, I was an employee for Mr. Stanley. Did y'all have a, a positive relationship? What was what was his response to the quality of work that you put forward to his company? Um, Mr. Stanley is like the regional director for um, Tradesman International. And so I've spoken to him a lot on the phone, you know, looking for jobs and always trying to be the, the person who's known for being on time and working hard and learning new things in the construction industry. Um, well, then, he, you know, he would give me projects where it was outside of my scope of work and I would learn it. And so that was kind of like impressing to him. And so, you know, when they would give like um, company, company events, um, banquets and stuff like that, I would go and I would always sit down and, you know, kind of use Mr. Spinelli as a mentor. 
Would you mind reading, starting right here with Mr. Green, Mr. Stornelli's remarks about your quality of work? Um, Mr. Green always gave my first touch to send to a project. His work ethic, constant smile, and great attitude made our clients request Mr. Green back. Mr. Green never turned down work and always showed up on time. Thank you. And is that the same attitude that you brought to this new moving company, Elephant Movers? Yes, sir. Commissioner, I'd like to reserve Exhibit 7 and Exhibit 8 for the confidential portion of our hearing today. All right. Um, so if we go back, are you, is that all that you have at this time, Mr. Honecker? Yes, ma'am. All right. And you didn't have any follow up to any of my questions? No, ma'am. All right. Um, if we go back, Mr. Green, to Exhibit 4, I see in the um, review there by Jerry T, appears to be by Jerry T, there's an indication it says the crew leader was wonderful. He was doing the best that he could under the circumstances. That's near the very bottom of the first page. Do you see that? Um. Bottom three lines. Yeah. Who was the crew leader? I was the crew leader. All right. So she's the reference there is to is to you. Yeah. When um, so in general, if the customer's property is damaged or they're claiming that it's damaged, tell me how you handled that. Yeah. So typically, if it's something that we can handle right there on the spot with like um, either a refund or a reduction from the bill or uh, some type of compensation for the damaged item, then I'm always willing to do that. I'm always willing, I'm always willing to replace or, or you know, make better something that is, is done on our negligence. And if not, then we will refer to our insurance. All right. And so in this case, when you go to page two and, um, of, of exhibit four, yes, and you indicated that you would uh, earlier that you would agree to repair the floor. This was this completely satisfied the uh, customer with regard to the move, or did they still outstanding complaint with you? No, that it completely satisfied. Um, I think the customer was like very understanding. Um, he kind of. The customer kind of seen like the experience gap. I was working with some guys that were new and I was kind of like coaching them along and constantly giving them instructions and stuff like that. So he kind of seen the, uh, the experience gap with, with the uh, with the work with the workers I had that day. And, you know, and he said to me that, um, you know, things do happen in the move. And, you know, I'm glad that you, you know, reached back out and was able to, you know, have our floor fixed. And on moving to Exhibit 5 with the Rashonda A review, do you recall that move? Do you still yeah, have yeah. a recollection? So how did she find out that the item was broken? Oh, uh, it happened right in front of her. Okay, so she saw it. Mm -hmm. It happened right in front of her. We, uh, she was coming out the house, and we were pulling, taking the dresser off the uh, truck, and just lifting it up, the weight of it alone just made the, the uh, particle board collapse. And you um, offered to pay for it. This, mm -hmm. is what, this is what this what her review indicates, even though she didn't consider it to be your fault. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Did she accept the money? Yes, ma'am. All right. And um, tell me a little bit more about Mr. Sternelli. Is is um, Tradesman International? Is that his business? Uh, no. Or he works. I, he's like the regional director, I believe. Tradesman International was in like uh, like fifty states, probably forty eight states. I think is very big construction company, and um, I think he's like the regional director. And so a lot of the, a lot of the field managers um, that works for him 
you know, it's, it's kind of like you go in, you go into their uh, their office, and you know, you got field managers there. His office is in the front, and a lot of times, like a few times, I do go there. I just go in there and sit with him and just talk to him about different things because now, you know, working for him, uh, I kind of use him as a mentor. Anybody that's like established and I think is like educated and structured, I kind of use those people as mentors in my life now. So, All right. So I'm going to ask Commissioner Gray, do you have any questions for Mr. Green at this time before we go into confidential session? No questions at this time, Commissioner. All right, Commissioner Kissick, do you have non-confidential questions? Uh, just one or two uh, questions, uh, Commissioner. Uh, Mr. Green, I, I know you said you had insurance that would help pay for claims or, or losses that might have been resulting from damage to things that you were moving. What kind of insurance do you have and what is the scope of its coverage? Um, we have we have cargo insurance, we have commercial insurance, right? We have cargo and commercial uh yeah, cargo and commercial insurance. I think our policy is uh, a million dollar policy. Um so far we we have no reason to use the insurance, but I think if something was like to happen on a job where we had to uh use the insurance. And our agent is like a real good guy, Mr. Mark. Mr. Mark is a real good guy. Then I can always defer to him and say, "This is what happened." And people want to, you know, go through the insurance process on this freight that was damaged, and I would, I would go that route. And do you know what the deductible would be that you would have to pay before they would pay a claim? I think it's five uh, hundred. Uh, my wife said maybe five hundred. Okay, very good. And, and let me ask you this, sir. Are, are you typically the crew leader on all of the jobs for Element Movers? Or is there anybody else that serves as crew leader from time to time? Yes, sir. Um, uh, I will drive with Travis Banks. He's uh, doing the crew leading thing now. Uh, I'm ready on it. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Yes. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, our uh, crew leader now is Travis Banks. So like I'm I'm not really on the truck as much as I would like to be. Um, you know, you just got one that keeps me off the truck. So Travis is mainly crew leader right now. And can you tell me something about Travis's background and experience before being hired by Elephant Movers? Yes, so Travis, uh, he worked for uh Branch Out Mover owned by Mr. Walter. And Travis was also one of the crew leaders over there. Um, he was he was also a driver over there, and so when um, we started our thing, I kind of took Travis with me. Okay, and how many full time employees does Elephant Movers have other than you and your wife? Uh, no full time employees. Everybody is uh, contracted. I see. Okay. And what is the responsibilities for elephant movers between you and your wife? How does that work? Uh, so my responsibilities is mainly dealing with like the truck and the crew, uh, making sure the truck is cleaned and everything like that. Uh, the crew, you know, have all the supplies they need. So oftentimes I get on the truck. My wife deals with most of the administrative administrative part. Um, Insurance, she she got to go through the insurance people and make sure everything is good with that. Um, she handles most of the stuff that's coming online via dump tag, uh, Yelp and stuff like that. She handles that, sending out quotes, and if they call, then they get me. I'm considered as the relocation specialist. So when they call me, it's in the capacity of being a relocation specialist. Uh, when they deal with uh my wife Inez online. They just know her as like uh, the owner of Elephant Movers, and she's the one that face online. And so she mainly deal with just like the administrative part. And um, she's taking care of administrative. You're taking care of more or less day to day operational details, and I assume doing estimates and things of that sort. Yes, sir. Do you have any formal mechanism? other than Thumbtack and Facebook and Yelp 
for seeking input or evaluations from customers or is it all customer initiated? Do you have any other tool for seeking feedback on the services that you provided? Um, I'm not sure. We have a website. Um, we have a website and we are on Google, listed on Google. And other than that, uh, I'm, no. So everything is mainly everything is mainly done online as far as like the reviews go. We always we always you know I mean ask our customers whether good or bad, whether after they did, had a good experience or a bad experience, please you know I mean leave your review. And I think online the virtual thing is everything for the moving industry right now. Final question: With the experience that you've had. Um, is there anything that you can think of where there might be opportunities for uh, improvement in terms of providing services in the future? And is there anything you've learned from experiences you've had up to this point in time as being a part of this uh, business? I think. Can you repeat the question one more time? It was two parts, and I kind of, I kind of was thinking about one. I understand. Uh, I guess the first part is there, based upon the experience that you have, is there anything that you can think about in terms of things you might be able to do to improve customer service or the operation of the business? And, uh, and, and you know, guess what your experience has taught you up to this point. Let's put it that way. That might make it a simpler question. Yes, sir. So, um, since operating the business, I've seen um, I've seen other movers, other companies that use technology. Uh, I mean, where they can, you know, put some stuff into their into their little handheld thing. And I actually talked to some of those guys, and they kind of explained it to me. So I'm seeing that technology can be like a revolutionary point with the moving industry. Um, as far as like how I want to use that technology. I really haven't figured it out yet because it's kind of like in limbo. We're, we're kind of nervous. We don't know how this is going to go. And so we really don't want to invest. We didn't want to invest too much. But I kind of like to think outside the box or so whatever I see. I'm not going to implement it how they implement it. I want to put like an elephant brand on it. I'm everything elephant. <laughs> I, really, I want to put like an elephant brand on it. I think given the opportunity and, you know, the chance to relax a little more. I just know I want to be different than other moving companies. I, I think that I can make a, a significant change on how things are going. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Brown Land. I don't have any further questions at this time. All right, thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Gray, uh, still no questions? Not at this section. All right. Thank you. All right, uh, gentlemen and Mrs. Green, we're going to take a 10 minute break to switch over to the team's meeting. You should have the invite. Um, we will come back. Um, we, we're going into the team's meeting to discuss confidential matters. When we conclude with those, we will come back to this um, WebEx platform um, for any uh, remaining non-confidential matters uh, and to bring the hearing to a close. So I would like you now to all make sure that you mute the WebEx as well as turn off the camera to the WebEx. And I'll see you in 10 minutes over on the Teams meeting invite.
Commissioner Brown Bland, this is Derek. I'm going to reach out to Commissioner McKissick and make sure he signs back into the WebEx. Okay, thank you. He dropped off when I think he dropped off off a of team. Okay. Mr. Jeffries and Ms. Mitchell, is it all um, temperature gotten any better or worse? I, Commissioner Brown Bland, I. <laughs> It's hot. It is smoking. <laughs> I, I'm sitting here in the courtroom with sweat running down my back. Yeah, yeah, and I got on this tie. It's that bad. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna just remind everybody we're still on. We're still being recorded. Yeah, I think it. Um, Law Commissioner McKissick got a. Gotta get him back here. Yep, yeah, Mr. Mertz is checking on him. All right, are we ready to come back on the record? Let me see. That's Mr. Hanukkah. Yes, ma'am. We're here and we're ready. There he's, there he's back. Everybody ready? All right. When we came out of confidential uh, session, Ms. Darucci Green is on the stand and already uh, has been affirmed. And Commissioner McKissick had a question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, yeah, the question, Mrs. Green, was this. I, I know you all started Elephant Movers about two years ago and went out and purchased a truck to do so. I was just wondering about how you went about locating that truck, um, you know, what that truck is like in terms of its suitability for your purposes right now, since it has experienced some breakdowns, and what the source of funds were that you used to purchase the truck. Can you help me out with that? Yes, sir. Um, I tapped in my 401k and also we used our tax return money to get, to get everything up and, you know, rolling and we purchased the truck and, the, uh, it was something else. Oh, we got the truck off of face. Was it Facebook marketplace? Uh huh. We found it on Facebook marketplace. And is it uh, functioning and operating well at this time? Yes, sir. It's functioning fine right now. Yes, sir. All, all right. I know there was some question about the lift gate functioning during some of the deliveries or occasionally. Is that functioning well now without me? Yes, problem? it's working fine now. Yes, sir. We got that fixed. All right. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I, I don't have any further questions at this time. All right. Commissioner Gray, did you have any for this witness? No, no questions for Ms. Green. 
All right, Ms. Green, you may be excused. So thank you very much. Yeah. Mr. Green, I will um, let your attorney um, perhaps end this in a way that he wants to, but I'll simply give you the opportunity to make your statement to us and tell us anything that you want us to know about um, about what this business means to you, your plans for the future, um, and what you think is relevant for us to know and you that you want us to consider in, in making this decision. Uh -huh. Thank you, Commissioner. First, I want to thank the, the Commission Board for just giving me the opportunity. Um, I'm excited, a little bit nervous, but it just feels good to even be at this stage right here. I mean, just to be able to have the hearing with you guys, man, just shows me, I mean, just the potential for growth. I think that um, if given the opportunity to move forward with the company, uh, it's going to be my life. It's, it's like everything. I mean, and I really do kind of honestly believe in this elephant brand. I mean, not just as a moving company, but I do have like plans to just just grow, man. This is like, just grow. I got so, I, what I feel like is so much knowledge and I'm learning now. Right now, my wife is in school for um business. We're trying to get her an MBA in business. I mean, to help that expansion uh, with, with the children, I'm constantly teaching them and, and, you know, reinforcing academics on them. So, you know, they won't have to go through the hardships, even though, you know, it, there's no progress without struggle. I just hope that they don't choose like some of the stuff that we did in our past to make it 10 times harder on us. And so, you know, given the opportunity, um, I think we're going to like bring a breath of fresh air to the movie industry and, you know, just this is this is the key. This is the key to my independence right here. Thank you. And Mr. Honecker, anything else from you? I close by echoing my client's sentiment that we're just so grateful to be here. As a young attorney, it's really a privilege to represent folks like Mr. and Mrs. Green who have such a compelling story and such a compelling vision for their company. And it's a privilege to be before the commission. I thank you for your generosity with your time and your thoughtful questions. I, I, I thought your questions allowed my client to tell his story in, in, in a very detailed and uh, contemplative way. It certainly made my job easy. And so I, I just am grateful to be here and thank you for your time. All right. For the record, Commission Exhibit 1 is received into evidence at this time, as well as exhibits, applicant exhibits 1 through 6 received into evidence at this time. Um, Mr. Honecker, the usual way this works is after the transcript is available, um, you will receive a copy. Your copy will be, um, will include the confidential version. The, the, there will be a public and a confidential version and the confidential version, of course, will remain confidential to the public, but it will be available to you. And, um, 30 days from its availability, when it's filed and it's posted on our website, you'll get notification, I believe, and we would ask that you submit a proposed order. And our staff is available to assist you in, in what um, the format or how those orders usually um, look. Great. That sounds good. Thank you. All right, if there are no other questions or anything else, I'll ask my staff, have I overlooked something? Mr. Jeffers, Mr. Mertz? Not to my knowledge. All right, then um, this will conclude the end of this hearing and I would ask Mr. McCoy, could you stop the recording at this point without ending the session? Sure. Uh, do you want me to stop uh, uh, broadcasting it on YouTube too? Yes, the hearing is concluded. Okay, I will. Uh, I will stop right now. All right. Are we? All right. Is that complete, Mr. McCoy? Yeah.